reading to you from the book of John, the first John, with the first chapter and with the fifth verse. And this is a message we have heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, We have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus has cleansed us from all sin. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic. Gave my heart to Christ over 51 years ago in uh, Seattle, Washington. One year later, God called me to preach. Oh, I wish you would have been with me and my wife and my quartet at the prison the other day. We had three services, one with the women, two with the men. And there was 15 men and women came to know Christ. Then my wife and I went to the Denver Rescue Mission at a packed house because it's cold back here. And we were packed out. And uh, my wife shared and I uh, told him how I met Jesus. And 15 men came to know Christ. Friends, I tell you, oh, there's nothing, anything like it in all this world. I'm so thankful God told me he wanted me to preach even though I don't do a good job. Listen. I'll be with you for half an hour tonight. Won't you just kick off your slippers, sit back and relax. Pour you a glass of iced tea or a cup of coffee. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? I'd like to take my text from the 7th chapter of Joshua and with the 10th verse. So the Lord said to Joshua, Rise up, why is it that you have fallen on your face? I've uh, made this uh, title, Rising Up from Defeat. See, Joshua, his call and commission was from who? From the Lord. He was born a slave. He had become the leader of Israel. Now, Moses chose him to scout the land of Canaan. We read in Numbers 13, 16. These are the names of the men whom Moses sent to spy out the land. But Moses called Hoshea, the son of Nun, Joshua. Now, Joshua was appointed to lead Israel into Canaan. Friends, listen to me. You say, well, Cecil, that was back a eon years ago. Friends, I want to tell you a little story. I want to shock you. If you are blood-bought, if you are a child of the Lord Jesus Christ, you too are commissioned and called to be a witness and a soul winner. There's going to be a lot of people on this earth when they die and they, they said, well, I did this and that, and find out they have no hardly any rewards whatsoever. They were saved as by fire. Joshua, remember, he was a slave boy, but now he's in charge of this great group of people. Now, he was chose to lead the Israelites into Canaan. And Joshua commissioned by the Lord to lead his people. Friends, listen. A pastor has a very important job. If he's a God-called man, uh, he has a tremendous responsibility. Oh, you don't know what a responsibility he has. I and every pastor and every evangelist and every teacher and every deacon in this world are going to stand before God and give an account for your life. Everything you've said, thought, or dreamed, God has a record of it. It kind of makes me shudder sometimes when I think of the responsibility that we as Christians have. Well, from victory to victory, we read in Joshua, the third verse, and they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up. Only about two or three thousand men need go up to Ai. Do not make all the people tall up, therefore they are few. Well, but in verse 6, Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening, both he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. 
My stars in the morning. Just send a few thousand to conquer IE, and they are what? Totally, totally defeated. A few thousand men, and they were defeated. Joshua was on his face, defeated in despair. And the Lord called him, and he says, uh, Alas, O Lord God, why didst thou bring this people over the Jordan only to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? If only we had been willing to dwell beyond the Jordan. <laughs> Again, beloved, listen to me, please. If you hear nothing more tonight in this message, if you are born again, you are called. Please, don't just think that going to church on Sunday and prayer meeting on Wednesday and uh, maybe a little supper to church on a Saturday night, don't think that's where your responsibility ends. That's just the beginning. There's so much more to Christianity that it's enough to scare you. Joshua must stop questioning God's character. And he did. He sure enough did. Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou? Something goes wrong, and what happens? He blames God. Hey, isn't that kind of like we Christians? Huh? Don't we, when things go wrong in our life, don't we turn to the Lord and say, Well, Lord, you knew about it. Why'd you let me do it? Because we're free to do whatever we want to do. Tonight, if you're unsaved, you know what? You don't have to be saved. If you desire not to be saved, you don't have to be saved. But I'll guarantee you, when you stand before God, you're going to find out that you wish you had been saved. Oh, yes, you will. Because hell awaits those who do not know Jesus. And, beloved, believe me, you have to know Jesus on this side of eternity while there's breath in your lungs. Behold, today is a day of salvation. Consider the good things God has done well. You remember the burning bush experience. Moses was 80 years old, out there herding a bunch of old sheep. I've done that myself. And uh, he'd killed that guy down in uh, uh, Egypt, and he thought, well, my life is over. Hey, Moses, your life is just about to begin. Hey, I'm 82, and I'm looking forward to great things in my life yet. Down at the mission the other night, all oh, my stars, the Spirit of the Lord was there. I told those men, listen, you're my people. I've been here in Skid Row, not here in Denver, but... I drank with you guys. I'm so ashamed to have to admit that, but I did. I didn't know any better, just like when Paul or Saul of Tarsus was crucifying a Christian. He did it in total ignorance. The only thing is, friends, I knew alcoholism was wrong. I knew I was, was destroying my family and our marriage. I knew that. But I didn't know where to turn. You say, well, shoot, you said your folks were Christians. They were. They died when I was a young kid. I had no direction. And I really had sp spoke to over six preachers over the past many years about my problems, and no one ever gave me the answer. Well, you know what the answer was, Jesus. Friends, that's what I keep telling people. The, the only way to heaven is through Jesus. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He that cometh unto me I shall in no wise cast out. Aren't you so glad that this wonderful God loves you? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You see, when God spoke to Moses in the burning bush, Moses immediately gave excuses why he was not capable of doing that great job. Beloved, I feel even the same way. After 51 wonderful years of preaching, I sure don't feel adequate. But I'm so glad that I know the truth. Jesus is the answer. That's what, if you know that, you're all set. And he is the answer. He's the answer to all of life's problems. And remember when <clears throat> Pharaoh and his bunch were after them and they were running like a bunch of bulldogs and they got up to the Red Sea and Moses said, whoa, and they said, why didn't you just let us die down there in Egypt? Why would you bring us out here to die? Moses said, just cool it, man. Chill. He stepped off in the water with that, and he held that staff out. And what happened? The water opened up. Boy, you talk about a miracle. And they crossed over on dry land. Well, they said, well, we're still going. they're still going to get us because they're after us. 
So boy, Pharaoh and his, and his boys went down into that water and woof, the water swallowed them up. Friends, don't be afraid when you're a Christian. The Lord will stand with us. If we do his bidding, he'll take care of us. You remember when he fed them with manna when they were so hungry? Boy, I don't know how they did it. And then, remember the water from a rock? And he led them across the flood of Jordan. He enabled them to conquer mighty Jericho. Now, after one defeat, Joshua blames God. Think of all God had done for us, loved us, gave his son for us, offers us salvation by faith, receives us when we come to him. How can we blame God for defeats? Now listen, Joshua must stop focusing on this one defeat. Verse 8, O Lord, what can I say since Israel has turned their back before their enemies? <laughs> Think of the blessings already given. Think of all the blessings promised for the future. Hey, friends, listen to me. If you're down in the dumps tonight and things haven't been going good, and I, I've been kind of down the dumps, but every time I see a bunch of people saved, then I come out of the dumps. Oh, that's a joy. Oh, a joy unspeakable. That's why God made soul winning such a joy, because that's a greatest gift. If you have the gift, and you know what you say, well, I don't have the gift. Oh, come on now. If you're blood-bought, if you're a child of the king, you are commanded. There is no options. You are commanded to be witnesses and soul winners. Well, God promises it was given to Abraham for his descendants. My star in the morning. Promises given to Moses for the people. <clears throat> yeah, and the Moses, the, the, uh, the promises given to uh, Joshua. Joshua had become problem conscious instead of power conscious. In spite of the blessings and promises, he focuses on one silly defeat. Now here's what he tells us in Philippians 3. So that my imprisonment in the cause of Christ has become well known throughout the whole Pragmatian guard and to everyone else. Well, now you see, he New for the Canaanites shall hear of this. God will take care of his own reputation. Now, Paul was in prison, boy, and the people had heard about him. But he knew that it would give them more courage in the time of problems. Joshua, please stop worrying about public opinion, for the Canaanites shall hear of it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. God will take care of his own reputation. And also God will lift up his people when they're down. God has brought victory to many defeated ones. Well, I'll admit it would have been defeat it would have been terrible when they just sent a few thousand soldiers out and they got their, their sails trimmed. Hey, listen, I'm telling you, hey, friends, I've been hearing all the nasty things that these uh writers in New York are saying about our servicemen and women. Oh my stars saying that they have everything and, and they're this and they're that. I tell you, I wish they'd send them over on the front line. Do you realize what these kids are going in there? Many of them are kids, you bet your life. 19, 20 year olds, Marine soldiers, Air Force, Navy. And they're fighting a, a seemingly, I, and remember I just said seemingly, losing war, but they're not gonna lose it. Come on, God is gonna step in there and help our people. You say, well, why would he help us instead of them? Because they don't know the true God. No, they don't. They they think they got the right God. But read the book of Koran if you think for five minutes that those people are right. Just read the book and you'll be flat out surprised. They have nothing but hate in their heart for infidels and for the Jews. They hate us with a passion. They teach their little children from the time they're able to understand that we are the enemy. They're not of God. Please, and I don't know why people uh, stand up for the Muslims. I'm telling you, it's just like, well, I'm not political, but I, I am getting so sick and tired. Of well, the Muslims, they're, they're not, they have a right to their religion. Yeah, they got a right to go to hell. Yeah, they sure do. But, and, and you know, if they'd listen to what we as Christians say, 
They wouldn't have to go to hell, would you? No, sir. Joshua did finally rise up, and Joshua led his people to victory. Friends, we can rise up from defeat and win. Oh, many times in my Christian life, I, I would get so down, and I'd think, what are we going to do? I pastored a church in Washington, and honestly, I doubt if there was one born-again believer in that church. I'm serious. I preached my heart out. I preached unto them Jesus. I told them that their good works wouldn't get them into heaven because they didn't have it anyway, but their good works wouldn't. I told them they couldn't buy their way in. They had to trust Jesus, but they, they wanted to live in sin. Sin is what keeps people from Jesus Christ. Did you know that? Sure, it's sin. Nothing less. People don't want their sin. They won't come to Christ lest their deeds be what? Reproved. Now, the Bible says his victory is ours, so we must rise and serve. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us a victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your tale is not your is not in vain in the, in the Lord. Your toil, I tell you, your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Isn't that wonderful? So you say, well, Cecil, I'm, I'm struggling. I'm struggling tonight to just keep my faith. Just keep my eyes on Jesus. Well, you got the right answer. Keep your eyes on Jesus. There's a song, turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look in his wonderful face. You say, Cecil, I am such a backslidden Christian. Well, what does the Bible say in the Old Testament? Woe unto you backsliders, for I am married to you. That's what God said. Now, if you don't want to be a backslider, then you come sliding forward. How do you slide forward? Well, I'll tell you how. Confess your sins to him. And he is faithful and just to forgive us all our sins. So you have no excuse. You have no excuse tonight. You can sit on a pity pot all you want. But if you want to get off the pity pot and come back to Jesus, then you have to tell him you're sorry for your sins. You say, well, do I have to be born again twice? No, you can only be born again once. Isn't that wonderful? That's right. The minute you're convicted of God's Holy Spirit of your sin, and you tell God that you're sorry for your sins, invite him into your heart, you are born again, your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life, and uh, you say, well, but then I sinned after that. Well, then you confess the sin to him. Is that so hard to understand? See, we're no longer slaves to sin once we trust Jesus. Didn't say you wouldn't sin, but we will not be slaves to sin. When you sin, if you're born again, God's Holy Spirit begins to tug at your heart, and he draws you back. Now tonight, if you're living in sin and you're a Christian, I'll guarantee you, he's a banging on your heart right now. He's knocking. Then say, Cecil's not very smart, but he told the truth. He certainly did. And I am willing to forgive you if you're willing to turn from your sins and come to me. Friends, listen, I don't know. I've got a feeling there's someone listening tonight who really are terribly discouraged. Maybe you lost your wife or you lost your husband or maybe a child or maybe your children are living in deep sin and you just, you just, your head's against the wall. Oh, but beloved, the Bible said he will never forsake us. He'll never turn his back on you. I remember the time I had such a terrible need, and it was uh, it, there was no way that this could happen, that this could be straightened out. The very next day, Jesus straightened it out. It was impossible. There was no way my problems could be solved. I got on my knees in my bedroom, and I wept like a baby. And I said, God, I don't know what to do. Lord, lead me. And he did. And he took care of my needs. So if you have a need tonight, I want you to come to him. If you haven't been saved, I want you to ask him, Dear Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me tonight for Jesus' sake. Amen. If you did that, call 303-471-8534. Listen, I won't use your name on the air. I won't embarrass you. I sure won't write and ask you for any money. Oh, friends, I don't care where you go to church. I'm only concerned where you spend eternity. So won't you give me a call if you don't know how to be saved? And if you can't, if you can't afford a long-distance phone call, you call me, collect. I'll accept it.
Fallen man held hostage by sin, doomed to a perilous fate. See a loving father, pain and mercy in his eyes, giving one son so that. that God did raise a ransom so we could have life everlasting. Friends, you know, there's something that has bothered me. I have been to churches where Christians are so stuck up that if they went out in a rainstorm, they'd drown. Let me read this to you. A person can believe in God, yet feel he is above others. He can act prideful 
arrogant and super spiritual, he may hope for an eternity to be with God and with, uh, with other believers. Yet he can be cold and distant. But love, true love, has no weaknesses or danger. Love never fails, never comes short. But remember, love is not indulgence and license. Love involves control and discipline as well as care and giving selflessness and sacrifice. I hope you're a loving Christian tonight. Love others. That's the best way to show them that Christ is real. I'll tell you for sure. Well, friend, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Moe. Thank you, dear ones, for listening tonight. Be sure and pray for me and my wife and my team as we are getting ready to uh, get our uh, woman's work together. It's been a hard situation. But you see, this is not for me or my wife or my quartet. This is for Jesus. So pray for us. Pray that the funds will be there when we need them. Until this time next Sunday night, I want you to be good to your neighbors. Stay sweet. Keep looking up. Oh, this wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night, and may God bless you real, real good.